really from right what's your true heritage not just i'm from ghana no right. we want to know what's your what's your mom's tribe what's your dad's tribe mm -hmm. how do you identify I, i like to think that we're actually living in an african renaissance but we just don't know it yet people the fun guys the serious guys sometimes the nice guys the wise guys whatever guys you want to call us a lot of guys you know what i'm saying halal guys because we always keep it not we keep it halal at all times never haram especially right now especially right now ramadan mubarak ramadan kareem to all our muslims brothers and sisters out there but the boys are back and if you don't know who you are, I go by the name DJ Anzo. Here with my man, Uncle E, in the place to be. Come on. Who you are is where two African millennials canoeing through this thing we call life and talking about those experiences from an African perspective. And we're making it our mission to edutain you on all things African. Fuck whether those. it's culture, whether it's music, whether it's food. Anything that you want to know, we're doing our best to edutain you on all that. So, welcome uh, for those joining us. Near Seven. And four. Seven. Uh, today is a very special day. Is that so? Because I want to say it to all my Ghanaians, Etisen, Akwaba, uh -huh. what else? Atu, Atu, and bring them to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, man, today, today, um, our, our esteemed guest, I don't, I don't. He needs no introduction, but I will, I will, we'll I will go him. out and say we need to ginger him small because small. this is the the TikTok African parent original, the funniest man in Africa, the tallest man in in Ghana, and look, look, <laughs> we gotta keep going we don't on. Have to talk about that. <laughs> we gotta keep going on about it, but. None other than the man himself, Yao Konadu. Let's hear a big yes, round of applause. Sir. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yao, welcome to the show. My namesake, as you know, Ibo, I'm a Thursday born. So it makes it Yao squared. Why two, my brother? Wow. What is Alpha. this? The Yao convention going on? It's the on Yao here? convention. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Talk to us, man. What's, what's been going on? Just, you know, life. I mean, I'm in college right now, you know. Mm -hmm. Trying to keep up the. You're facing your books. I'm focusing on my Thank books God. very yes. much, very much. You know, trying mm -hmm. to balance that with my content as well. And yeah, mm -hmm. just taking you know each day one step at a time. Thank uh, you for taking the time, Yao, to join us today. No problem. It's a, it's a pleasure again. <laughs> nah, cause cause we are you just gonna say some. No, hey, I was going to say it. You know, us typical. We today we it's just very fitting when we're having the guy who is. In my opinion, one of the favorites for displaying our African parents mm -hmm. and how they struggle with technology. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. only fitting that we go through <laughs> our own technical difficulties own. today. Hey, uh, we'll, we'll save the details, but yes, yes, but we were moving mad today. No, with the, the DSTV the remote was not working today. Yeah. Yeah. It's mad, it's mad, it's mad, but it's going to make the conversation that much better. Factos. Um, so as you know, Yao, um, one thing that we, we like to do is ask, where are you really, really from, right? What's your true heritage? Not just, I'm from Ghana. No, right. we want to know what's your, what's your mom's tribe? What's your dad's tribe? Mm -hmm. How do you identify, um, you know, to what extent can you tra trace your lineology? Go ahead and, and, and tell us where you're really, really from, bro. So... I was born and raised in Connecticut in you know USA. I was born here. Uh, I've only been to Ghana twice in my life. The first time was when I was one, and the second time was when I was four. So I don't really have too, too many memories of back home. But I'm going this year in December with my sister. So hey, come on, come, come on. on. Yeah, congrats. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna work, try and get as much footage as possible. Try and like really fully uh -huh. like immerse myself because like as much as I try and like rep like like the Ghanaian like heritage like I feel like I don't I feel like like not Ghanaian enough so I feel like I have to go and experience Ghana mm -hmm. Ghana for myself but yeah uh, my brother and my sister 
They're both born in Ghana. They're both like 20 plus years older than I am. There's like a big gap. Um, okay. My my dad is from the Ashanti region. He's from Efijase. And my mom is from Eastern region. She's from Indian. And my, my dad is a full-blooded Ashanti man. Uh, I know like uh, a lot of, like with a lot of- Full-blooded. African, full-blooded, 100%, nothing else. <laughs> But <laughs> like uh-huh. I, know, I know like a lot of Africans like we, we only like identify with like our dad's side. But like after I mm-hmm. asking my mom more questions, I found out that she I, I was also part Ewe through her father. Mm. And she's also um Achim. So I identify as yeah. Ash- Ashanti, Achim, and also Ewe. Okay, okay. Yeah. And we were alluding to that um earlier, but Ewe is actually sp- spill over into Togo, so yeah. I know a lot of Togolese that are Ewe. Makes sense. The colonialists yeah. always did us dirty. This no always just people. drew nice lines around us. Yeah. So, no, that, that's that's dope, though. That's Thank awesome. you for sharing. And, and the fact that you're that connected to it, even though you don't spend that much time there, that's that says a lot, man. Yeah. Um, says a lot. And and and. And kind of along that lines, like what prompted you to to even, you know, go back into uh, to chase your 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 heritage and h- how did that come about? Just you know, being a kid, like asking a thousand questions a day, just like one. Like I I don't know. I, I always it, it first started from uh, like from me wanting to know the meaning of my name, like what did Yao mean? What does Yao mean? You know. Mm-hmm. Him breaking down that, you know, we get our names based off the days of the week. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And then it, and then he started to, like, tell me stories about how, you know, the Ashanti kingdom came to be. And then we even got to, like, watch documentaries on things like that. So it was just, like, it was nothing that my parents, like, forced on me. It was just me being a kid and being curious and me wanting to know, like, why things are the way they are. Yeah. Yeah, so that was just one thing that really was just very interesting to me. And it still is. Like, I ask questions to this day. I I never stop asking. Yeah, that's why. And I want to touch upon your name a little bit, Yao. So, as we know, is this with, educate me a little bit, with the Asante people, the day of the week, Mm -hmm. if you were born on a certain day of the week, you get one specific name, right? Mm -hmm. So, for you, it was Yao. Yes. What does that name signify? Uh, what have you learned that it signifies? And how have you kind of claimed that identity and also be proud of that unique name that you, is given to you, especially growing up uh, here in the U.S.? Well, I, I, I've tried to ask if there was like a deeper meaning than just like a male born, born on Thursday. Because like, I know with like mm-hmm. other Africans, like especially like Yoruba names, like their names like are like sentences, yeah, like, full on like sentences. Yeah. So it's, yeah, not, yeah. Like, it's not like the same in like Ghana, okay. like in like tree, but I, I, I yeah. still I still feel like um, you know, the importance in my name, like growing up, like I, I found it fun to like explain like my heritage and like, you know, how I got my name. And, and- you know, like, you know, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of first generation Africans would like try and like shy away from that. But you can't really for me, I couldn't really escape being Guyanian or being African because I have a hundred percent African name. Like well, I'm Yao Kunadu. I can't escape yeah. being Guyanian. So he's, he's not yeah. David. He's, there's no he's David, there's no American name, <laughs> English name. And I, I don't know, I love that. Yeah. Because yeah. I fall under the Yao bucket as well, where it's your name is fully identified as right. clearly you're from Africa. Maybe they might not know which country or region, but it's important also to narrow, to be proud of that. And especially when you're away from the land or the countries where people don't have your name yeah. and find it unfamiliar to not shy away from it or feel like you need to make it easier to either say your name or give an alternative European or American name yeah. in terms of just kind of fitting in in a way. Something, something interesting is this has been a conversation before where growing up, a lot of Africans didn't, they didn't want to claim that of course. their Africanness, right? So uh, I remember specifically around the whole Afrobeat boom in like 2012, the Azontos, the, you know, Skelewoos, all of that course. stuff. 
that's when people started to really come into their Africanness. Being proud of that. You know, so instead of Yao saying, my name is Yao, you might have found he was saying, my name is Y. You know, to 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 hey. Americanize it. You see what I'm saying? They say, say Alex, my name is Alex or Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> this one is taking shots. <laughs> you get yeah, it. But, I'm, 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 uh, I'm Kwame. I ain't no I, Alex. You know, like, you don't even see, I'm Kwame. Like, I got you. You though. get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's dope, bro, that, that you, for you, you said, no, my name is Yao. If you don't know how to say it, maybe you should think about your life, you know, because my name is Yao. Mama call me Yao, I'ma call him Yao. Yeah. You know, that's why it is. If whatever my mom calls me, this is what you have to call me, my yeah. guy. Yeah. But, and I think it's so dope from Yao, here he is, a first generation Ghanaian American. Exactly. Claiming this more than that, people we know that are, were born in Amer- Amer- Africa, raised there, and then they come to US maybe for college or so, and start playing these funny games around their heritage name because they just are trying to either fit in. Mm-hmm. But I really hope if you are African, especially moved here or even grew up here as well, don't shy away from that name. You're really embrace it, man. Embrace take, it. It's so powerful. F- take it fully. Yeah, take know? it fully. So one thing one thing we wanted to go into, yeah, was obviously um, the comedy is blown up, right? Um, it's it's very recognizable, like no matter where you are. Uh, I know that for us personally, the one video that that blew up was the while getting money while you are sleeping, you know. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. That that video, you, you don't, don't know, know what's what going on. You are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> That video blew up, man, and like so relatable. It's so relatable because we both have personal experiences with that. But um, talk talk a little bit about like how your parents influenced um, y- you to even get into a space where you can express yourself in a comedic way. Um, talk about how you know it, just growing up, how your pre- you the the real representation. Of of what you um sort of show us on, on TikTok, just go a little bit into that. Well, like one thing, like I just I see the I see the world in just a humorous way. Like I just try to find the humor in everything, like no matter like how awful it is. Mm-hmm. And like I feel like there's like beauty and like the ugly parts of like like African culture. And like growing up, I would like see things and like I would try and like you know process what I've like seen and like like I don't know I I my so growing up with like my parents you know my dad being like more of like the laid back kind of guy but my mom was like really on me about like education and like you know how I present mm-hmm. myself and like you know this that and the third but they're very funny people like they're very serious but like they're very funny at the same time and it's like I try and like highlight the good qualities as well as the bad qualities, you know, because I don't want to make it seem like I'm just dogging on them, you know, like I try, I try and like present like these scenarios as like, okay, like this is a problem, but like, like, like I'm at a loss for words right now. I, I don't, I don't even know how, how to explain. I get, I get what you're saying. It's like, this is a problem. And this is sort of like, this is a lighter, lighthearted approach that we can take to solve Exactly, right? exactly. It's like, yeah. yeah. Bringing humor to, Bringing humor yeah, into to a, what yeah. our realities are growing up in an African household in yeah. general. And of course, every African household is different, but there are commonalities we have across the board that we exactly. relate to in how we were raised, the authority our parents instill on us, the the whole idea of the respecting it's their way or the highway right the cultural aspects of things the traditions that we all have to initially absorb and never kind of have our own way of expressing so it sounds like to me how this was a great way for you to find expression through humor yes yes well, would you say that's kind of how that it led you into the content creation 100 percent because you know, when it comes when it comes to like trying to 
talk to your parents is like they say like oh like you can talk to me about anything but you can't talk to them yeah. you can't talk to them about <laughs> everything no, not really I'm not everything, everything, man. because like yeah you'll talk to them and like it'll go through one ear but then it'll, they'll like process yeah. it as like disrespect because like they feel like any like pushback or opposition is just like yeah. you know us trying to you know not follow what they're saying but it's like I don't know. I... So, and to add to that, yeah. Yao, you had mentioned your love for sports growing yes. up, how you always wanted to play sports. And typically, as me and Anzo, if you, we've had these discussions as well, <laughs> these sports business is not entertained by our African parents. It's typically only focused on academics. And if we're talking about any sort of pursuing sports as a full-time career or passion that is not something that is even deemed acceptable let alone even considered so yeah if you can talk about your experience in how i would say it's a general maybe stereotype across most african parents they don't want to hear anything about sports or pursuing passions outside of academia and why do you think that is that reason i feel like you know, with, like, our African parents, like, dropping everything and, like, moving to a foreign land, like, we have to learn a new language, a new culture. You know, you're all alone. So it's, like, they've they've sacrificed so much and, like, they've built this life. So, like, they we, we as, like, the first-generation kids could, like, have a better, you know, a better life than they did. So they want us to have, like, the most secure careers. So when it comes to, like, Trump mm-hmm. wanting to be, like, an athlete or doing something creative, like, they don't, they like, they see, like, it, it's not a guarantee, like, to go to the NBA or to, of course, right, or to be like a content, a big content creator. Like, there is some doubt, like, you might fail. And, like, yeah. they, they want, like, the chance of failure to be like 0. 0.0000, like, 1%. So it's like, yeah, man. I, 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 it comes from a place of love. I feel like, uh, like, a place of, like, you know, fear of failure, but it gets to a point where it's like, a kid could have a talent in something and like their fear of their kid wanting to fail could like make them miss, like miss out on like trying to like hone that talent instead of like, you know, like pushing it down and like making that kid go on a career path that really isn't for them. Because we see yeah. like a lot, a lot of our uncles and aunties like in like dead end jobs or like even dead end marriages, like married, like arranged marriages yep. that they didn't want to be in. So it's like, right. You know that that sort of thing is like it's a generation. It's a generation. It's a generational thing, and it's a it's a thing about exposure too. Like if you don't know something, then it's harder to sort of um, approach it and 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 accept it. Because for me, I know till this day. Marcus Rashford is taking my spotlight. <laughs> I was meant to be in Manchester Yo, United. We were supposed to be me and we Iboy, the game. You know, Iboy was supposed to be. Voighost. Voighost you know. times 1,000. I will right now like, put me in. I'll do better like job. those than uncles. I could have been a footballer. <laughs> the one, the one, the one, the one, I could have been a footballer, but I injured my money. I, I, I was meant to be in Manchester United. Factos. <laughs> you get it. So, no, but it's also a thing of like, as you get older, you start to understand that perspective, right? You start to see the, oh, okay. Maybe after all, I'm not Marcus Rashford. I'm yeah, better, right? But my parents wanted me to focus on something, something that I'm better else. at, right? And and you start to see sort of the lanes that they see through because it's, um, it, I mean that's that that's, was never their reality, right? But that's the question I asked too to both of you guys. As I've grown older now, I do think our African parents deserve more flowers. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. For what y'all mentioned, the sacrifices they made coming into new countries, lands, really having the vision for their kids. Yeah. It's as if they really didn't come here for them. They Not came here for us. For us. And as you mentioned, if they're doing quick maths, mm-hmm. us telling them we want to play, become NBA player, or we want to be nowadays a YouTuber, yeah. something like that. That's not aligned with what they make those sacrifices for. So it's very hard for them to encourage you to do those things because yeah. they are wanting to increase your likelihood of success. And typically, as we've known, as they have known, the best route through is getting your education, getting your degrees, mm-hmm. and 
climbing that one ladder. Yeah. And I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all is a testament to that. So y'all tell us like how your parents received it when you started creating content, when you, you know, started getting big, like what was their reception to it? And I mean, they, they obviously, it was a new thing that they were exposed to. So talk about that. Yeah. So my mom, my mom didn't understand it at all at first. Like she thought it was just a waste of time. Like she really, <laughs> she told me so many times that I should just stop and focus on school. Cause it was mm-hmm. during like the COVID time. So like, you know, it was like online school and like just a whole big mess. And like, you know, she was just really hyper focused on me, like just, you know, staying locked in and zeroed in on school. But like I found a new talent, like a new like hobby. So I tried to, I just tried and tried to convince her and like tell her like this is like a serious thing that I'm like, you know, trying to pursue. And she didn't really like buy into it until that one video went viral that you don't know what's going on video. You don't know what's going on. Because that was all over Facebook. Like all the all the aunties in my church, they all saw it. They sent it to my mom. <laughs> like it, I, I, you couldn't you couldn't hide from that video. So yeah. yeah. After that, she like it really opened her eyes and she saw like yeah. how like big of an audience like I was like gaining. So it was yeah. now she's like now she's like fully accepted it. And she like she subscribed to my YouTube channel. She follows me on TikTok. Come like, on, she Come she, on. Does it, she can't wait for the next video. <laughs> yeah. So was the was the community reception um, what you expected it to be as well as far as like the aunties at your church and the uncles and stuff? I mean. Or does that do you never even check for that really? Yeah, but the, like not really. Like I yeah. gr- like growing up I I would go to like a lot of like functions and like you know, I'd be around like the uncles and aunties a lot, but these past few years I haven't really been around them really. So I, I don't know what their opinion of me is, but you know it I, I make matter. videos, I it make shouldn't videos matter, about yeah. them. It shouldn't matter, but <laughs> I mean, it, I make videos about them, so if they want to talk, you're just giving me a skit. Well, I'll give you more juice. <laughs> well, uh, you know, the uh, African uncles and parents was that is their reputation. And what will others say? <laughs> Precisely. So, what will others say Precisely. is such a huge dynamic. And I do think we have probably way more talented, like, in general, like, we're way very talented in mm. terms of our expressions, just our culture, how we are as Africans. Yeah. We're very dramatic. We have language. We're so talented. And I want... Yao is showing, you know, should be an example for anyone who's, you know, wants to make content out there or right. has ideas. Go ahead and do it. Don't worry what your parents will really think, as long as you're not being disrespectful about it. Or, But I do think we also need to... I see it more happening with... Gen Z's especially, yeah. but this idea that creating content, expressing humor, being funny, and all of us enjoying it, like your, you, you should consider what your family would think or people who know you would think. That shouldn't matter. Right. Like if, you, if you're enjoying it, making content and it's dope and people love it, why should you worry about like what will others say type of deal? Right. Like, I feel like that affects us too much exactly. in our society sometimes. And, and, I, and another thing is, excuse me, um, we're seeing, I, I like to think that we're actually living in an African renaissance, but we just don't know it yet, right? Low key. A lot of things are exploding out of the yes. continent, whether it's the music. Mm-hmm. Now you can walk into a Chipotle and you hear Burner Boy. Yeah. Oh. Thames is everywhere. Well, like, for you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, real. Real. The, the music is exploding. Like, it was crazy. At a PWI. In the gym, you I see what I'm PWI, saying? I go to Central Connecticut State University, and they're playing with Rama in the gym. Yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> huh? You see what I'm saying? And and a lot of Africanness is exploding right now. It's huge. And I want to say shout out to you for playing your part in the content creation on the comedic side, because this is what's going to push the needle, right? Flex. African representation is more evident than ever. And you might look back in however long that time period may be, six months, a year, two years, three years, four years, five. And now we've got a whole media platform where it's Yaokunado TV and our stories are being told, right? Yes. The story of the African uncle who walked 10 miles to school every day in the rain through the river. Made sure, and never had a bee. And Always. never had a bee in his life. Always a Will now be the... You see what I'm saying? Always. Now that takes its place at the table. Yes. In film, right? Where it's like 
not that we need validation from, you know, the Oscars or the Grammys, but those are going to be the forefront because this type of content is pushing and then pushing and it's, you're seeing people um, interact with it. Like, oh, I'm actually from Canada. I'm actually from the UK. I'm from Romania, but it's still hitting those areas. And so that, I, I, yeah, shout out to, to Yao for real, for, for pushing. Yao, we're on, not on just comedy. saying this because you're sitting here. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you how we look at it as Anzo saying is that is the modern day African Renaissance right. that has happened now. It's a wave that's going on. And we're now in this phase of content creation, creatives, right. Right. TikTok, African parents. It's yeah. like, you just do an African parents hashtag. It's like one something billion. It's a big boom. So that tells you, you it's see what a I'm huge saying? boom. Because and how many of those people are inspired from exactly. the Yao Kanadu TVs? The African Renaissance mm -hmm. that is happening right now. Modern day African Renaissance, especially if we're talking about content creation. And I'm using the TikTok, maybe IG platform, and I'm pinpointing it down to the big trend of simply the topic of African parents. Yeah. The massive influx of content that has been created and is booming on yeah. these platforms. Right. And representation of African parents, families, cultures. And we're talking to one right now who's one of the greatest the, the trailblazers we have yeah. right now that's yeah. going on. And uh, it's, yeah, we need, we're not gassing you. Not gassing the make thing. sure your head is, doesn't get you know? any bigger as we're telling you. This. <laughs> but we just want to hear from you. What have you seen? How has that been from your lens of seeing this huge trend around African parents and just African comedy? It's just, it's just amazing to see because when I, when I first hopped on TikTok in like February, 2020, there was like, a, like a little African content lane, but like, I felt like it was like a little bit like dry. So like I, I tried, right. I tried, like, I wanted to put my own spin on it, you know, because I was, I, I felt like, you know, I'm a pretty funny guy. Like I don't take anything seriously, really. Like that's, that's one thing that my mom yells at me for. Like you are, you're never serious. You know, I'm a serious <laughs> child. But it's like, you know, I, I, I tried, I tried to like, I tried to like, you know, bring like the the humor of like you know the african you know culture and it, it's just mm -hmm. amazing to see how big it's grown because you, you see like creators like dr abu you know og maro mm -hmm. abdulio facts uh uh mm -hmm. clinton ish like i could name so many different people who are just doing their thing and like you know just showing like all sides of africa in a positive light because when it comes to like mainstream media, you you know you see like the same things you know regarding Africa like mm -hmm. poverty, same nonsense. poverty, hunger, war, you know the whole nine yeah. like and you know just to see like you know Africa being shown in like a positive light you know yeah how we have like personality too like we have things going on too you know and it, it's just it's yeah. just it's just great to see how much it's grown and like how like how non African people are like you know having their eyes on us and like mm -hmm. you know not that, we, not, not that we need their validation but like they see like you know Africans are like valid too like we're fired too exactly yeah. and and I'm not I'm not going to say any names in the face of diplomacy of course but there's some uh, creators out there who I think do exactly the the opposite which is regress us in the sense of yes. how far we've come of as as Africans yes right? yeah uh, you you've seen some of them. I think you'll know who I'm talking Look, about. But me, yeah. I'm going to say it. Though. If <laughs> hey, this wasn't cool Ramadan, it, I would say it, yo. <laughs> you need to, I would say it if it wasn't cool Ramadan. But down. as I say, let me cool down. You know what I'm saying? There are people who who do that. Um, but that um takes it, nonetheless. It, it does not take away from the people who are doing it the right way, who are really like highlighting Africanness yes. and African culture the way it's meant to be. Yes. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to tap dance if yeah. you're going to create you, you, African you based don't have comedy to dance. or content. You don't have to. Um, Just be yourself and be authentic in showing representation. Yeah. Because it's like. But being, as we it's mentioned. Like we, yeah. It's like, it's like a menstrual show. Like, it, it's like. <laughs> I get second hand. It's more than this. Sambos. I, I hate. That's the ick though, yeah. And I, you know, I want to. Like, that's. I can't stand it. Yeah. Whenever I see it tap dancing modern day minstrel among Africans on these apps making us look bad 
perpetuating stereotypes that we are actually trying to eradicate in mm-hmm. terms of having people like Yao actually show real comedy, right. real representation. Like how, you know, I, I don't want to say we need to have policing or, you know, tell people they shouldn't create those things, but it's a bad look. It's a bad look, man. It's a bad look. So, nah, the, the, the hook is always going to be the, the cringiest and the corniest stuff, but... Uh, uh, let me not go into detail with with some of that, but not yet for sure. That there, there's there's definitely a, a, a flu of 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 just people who are doing it right. Shout out to them. Shout out to the OGs who trailblaze too. Factors. As you know, my the original African dad Sam takes off. He was back on Vine days, you know. So to see now that you've pushed the needle and said. Not only African dads, but African parents, African uncles, aunties, you know, the cousins, as as our Ghanaians say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is chopping the money. <laughs> you know, it is chopping the money. Like it's 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 so refreshing and dope to see Very that, that it's you know we need that comedic relief. When I right. send my cousin that money or so and they chop it, but I can go and watch videos, see how out there you see how, making that. I'm like, you know what? You know, these these that's you know, life. Is, that's life. You, you know, know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um now yeah, so but it's 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 really dope for me to see us represented in so many different facets, right? Um yeah, one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, do you have any famous sayings or proverbs that your parents just used to drill into you? Prevention is better than cure. Oh, God. Prevention <laughs> is better than cure. My, that's my mom's favorite saying. And, like, this past, like, uh-huh. since I got to college, like, it, it's, like, really, like, resonating with me. I'm like, prevention is really better than cure. Because, like, like, her, her, like, her, whole, her whole thing is, like, well, the Africans is like when they're like raising their children, it feels like they're trying to like shield them from the world, you know, not them, not let them like experience things and like mm-hmm. yeah. their own mistakes. So it's like her whole thing with like prevention is better than cure is like she would rather me like not like be like a risk taker. So Anzo, where was a famous? proverb or quote you could remember your parents telling you always my parents you know they they didn't use too many like specific ones yeah Uh, that would come more from like the the people around i remember prevention is better than cure was one of them but another one my my pops you see my pops was he 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 was a philosopher so he used (laughs) to say live in the now ah right because he i i was I was scattered as a kid, man. Mm. Like I was like, "Oh, what's this? What's this? What's that?" You know what I'm saying? So I was I was moving on to the next thing quickly. Mm. And um, my pops used to say, "Yo, live in the now. Like, don't worry about no. the next thing. Don't worry about what's what's happened already. Focus on what's in front of you." Uh, a simple story. One time, I was jumping around the house, and I jumped and stepped on a toothpick, uh, uh, and it went halfway up my foot. Uh, uh. And he said. Did you live in the now? And to this day, it doesn't make sense why he said that, but <laughs> I've never stepped on a toothpick since then. <laughs> so my pops, my pops, yeah, he, he was always on. Live in the now. Yeah, and live in the now. is better than cure. Than cure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact what about you? Man, I would say my dad, my dad always has sayings and is very vocal. Mm-hmm. But I'll say one that always comes is he will always find his specific moments to he's like Ibrahima mm-hmm. especially if I'm like being mischievous or hurting myself stuff like that mm-hmm. or as he says you're being rough you're always being rough why are you so rough <laughs> yeah but he'll always say Ibrahima yeah. I told you the road of I don't care <laughs> leads <laughs> to the city of had I known this man used to tell me this yow every time bro the city of had I known man. I have been to 115,000 cities of had I known according yeah, to my dad yeah. so yeah the road of I don't care leads to the city of had I known always that man drilled it man my, my mom used to say you need to pull up your socks <laughs> <laughs> she said, when I'm not doing Think what about I need it. to do, she said, you need to pull up your socks. Think I said, about what it. 
That what does that mean? But like, you said it. They were deep. They said think. Did, did she ever like break down what that meant? Nope. No. Nope. Uh, yeah. Well, I come had to on now. It out by break myself, down. man. That's that's part of being an African kid is you got to figure it out. Whatever they saying, you know. You gonna be like that hangover meme doing calculations. Yeah. <laughs> doing mathematics. Quick maths. Um. <laughs> uh, oh, another thing I wanted to touch on. A lot of first gen kids here. They say. I'm from, I'm from Dallas. Yep. But my parents are from Nigeria. Hmm. I'm from Providence, but my my parents are from Gambia. Yeah, you know, my like, parents are African. They're from Africa and that, but... You uh, see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And along those lines of what we were talking about earlier about suppressing your Africanness, right? Um, it's it's yeah. dope to, to, to see that you didn't, but what are some things that... Besides your name, right, that your parents did that could make you never run away from being African? Was it like the music you grew up around? Was it the community? Was it the church? Was it, you know, what are some of those things that just kept you grounded in who you are as a Ghanaian man? I feel like, I feel like for me, like, I feel like my parents were pleasantly surprised with like how much like I embrace my heritage because. I haven't, I've only been to Ghana twice in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, first time, I I spent my first birthday in Ghana. And then the second time I went, I was four. And then I haven't been since I'm 19 now. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go at the end of this, I'm going to go at the end of this year. Inshallah. I'm going to try and make some new memories. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know. What was the question again? Is that, <laughs> what are some of the things that kept you grounded in being Ghanaian, you know, like... Right, right, yeah. right, right. Sorry. Yeah, so one thing that my parents, like, stressed was to speak in tree at all times. Ah. Like, obviously, obviously, me being born in America, I'm going to, you know, learn English in school. Yeah. But, you know, at home, you know, just strictly tree. And it kind of influenced the way that I talk. Like, you know, I, when I was a kid, like I was speaking more tree, but then when I went to school, it kind of faded away. But mm-hmm. I, I fully like understand tree, and I kind of speak English the way they do sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it might come out like I obviously do like you know the accent, but I actually kind of talk like that a little bit. Yeah, and you know, obviously my name, you know, me being named Yao Kunedu, is I, I can't escape being Ghanaian. Like I can't be a Facts. Being an African. Yeah, so I just, I just, you know, embrace that. Like I, I never. I was never ashamed of it. Like, you know, there'd be kids in school who would make like, you know, the booty scratcher jokes or like the, you know. The Michael those, Black those and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Akon, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I I was never one of those kids who like, it, it never affected me. I would just be like, okay, and then do my own and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, okay, shoot. <laughs> like, like, I, I, couldn't care, I couldn't care less. Yeah. Like, I was one of those kids who was like on the bus 7 a.m. listening to Shatawali like on like hey, on the way to school. Come like, on. Yo, I, you're, you're saying my, some heavy my hitters. Whole, my whole, some heavy hitters. Like, no. I, my parents, my parents like did a good job with like, like playing Ghanaian music all the time. Yeah. Like that, that also helped me like understand Chi and like, you know, helped me like get into the music because like they have like a whole like cassette tape of like, KK Fosu or Foryan Ponsa. Uh, come on. Uh, come on. Um, uh, Kofi and T. Uh, Kofi B. Oh. Um, yeah. Daddy Lumba. Daddy Lumba. Aha. Kwame. Alex Konedu. Okay. Alaji K. Deep from in Kong. there. Like, I can name like so many different people. And it's like, it, it's like, it's like weird that like, like as a kid, I didn't appreciate hip life mm-hmm. and stuff because I was like always trying to like you know do my own to at the parties. But like as I grew older, <laughs> I was like, wow, like we were making like timeless bangers yeah, because yes. Ghana music right now is like not nice. A hundred percent. Yo, and so nah, I I hear you on that because, well, f- from my perspective as a DJ, right? Um, one one of one of one of our really good friends, one of my best friends, uh, his name is DJ Narum. He's from the Ewe region. And he's kind of the person who's been responsible for really even me, like, kicking off my career in that sense. Um, But 
him and I have shared a lot of Ghanaian music between each other. And I actually have my honorary Ghanaian citizenship. I'm just waiting for the passport to he arrive. He gave so, Ghana Jolof the highest rating he's yo, ever had. I'm saying, so the, the thing about like Ghana music is people don't understand how rich it is and how... There's too many bangers through high life, hip life, even the new stuff, like all the new kids on the block. Ghana really does their thing with music. So the fact that your parents raised you around that, like hats off to them. That's powerful. It's you very, know, he has all of that. You think he's not going to be proud of his name or go exactly. and anyone crack jokes. He, they do, yeah, he ain't missing out on do, nothing. Yeah. One thing I try to do like in my skits is like, I'll try and have like a, old hip life song like in the background uh-huh. like, I noticed just, that just, just, just as like a shot yes. just like as, as a shot Always. because I feel like I feel like they didn't get like their flowers like during they their time so it's like I, I, I feel like you know if I'm making a skit that I know that might get like a decent amount of views like why don't I like you know shout out like a song that that like you know held me down during like my childhood yeah and, like, gotta pay homage to the ones that, yeah, that really did it um yeah share it with other people yeah a question for y'all so, going back to embracing your Africanness, y'all being a first generation Kenyan American that was born and grew up here, and he's highlighting to us that he had all the tools, you know, that he ha- had at his disposal. That mm-hmm. it would be a shame if he's not proud of his heritage. Like, right. look at how awesome that is, but. I would also say on the other flip side, Africans that maybe come here a little bit later, a lot of times they struggle in terms of finding ways to either suppress their Africanness, which is mainly quickly trying to change their accent Mm -hmm. or not calling themselves Kwame and choosing Alex (laughs) or you got to let that go dressing accordingly. (laughs) So we know who I'm saying we've seen it, you know? So I guess, that dynamic, Anzo, like, these people too, I, I feel like you're not being, like, I think like you'll only find that among us. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think if we have someone coming from New Delhi yeah. and they're coming here, I don't think they're going to be trying to nah. find ways to, oh, let me try and, you know. None of that. So I guess how do we how do we also spread awareness and maybe enlighten these people that, you don't have to try and do these things to fit in if you come to the U.S. or go go abroad. Like, you do not have to feel like your name, how you speak, your accent is something that you need to suppress to fit in. Yeah. I mean, it's also an issue of perspective, right? Because as you as you travel to a, you settle in a new place, you're going to adopt some customs. You're going to, you know, speak a certain way. Like, those, some of those things are inevitable. But I think what you are after is really the mindset behind that. Yeah, it's exactly. more so like, why are you doing that? And, you know, why is it then when an Indian man comes here, he will never say he's anything else? Or when a Chinese man, you get what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, a lot of a lot of Africans struggle with that. But um, I think it there's two... It seems more prevalent. Among very very much more prevalent. Yeah. There's two sides to it. But um, I think now that we have the representation we need... We can't afford to be doing yeah. all that, you know? It's yeah. like, if anyone has an adverse opinion of the continent or your country or your village or your city, you, know, it's, you have the resources to to inform them otherwise now. So that, I, that, that idea of us being the, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm this yeah, kind of African. Just associate or, yourselves you know, or... Allow it, bro. Come on, to, fam. You're moving to, mad. We need to move past that. Allow that. It's... It's a dub at this. You're point. moving mad, you know. Um, want to get into the the would you rather's? Yes. Or do Should we want to give you out the diaspora? Uh, uh, yeah. Question for you. As you know, a hot topic on our page right now has been the diaspora wars, right? Um, give us your perspective on that. Um, as you know, Ian and I are very pan Africanist and about the idea of u- unity um, across the diaspora. No matter where you're from, as long as you are a black man, we see you as one of us. Give us your perspective on on that and sort of uh, the attempt for there to be division um, in that sense. I feel like before I say anything, I feel like one mm-hmm. one one big misconception that really frustrates me is like when African Americans would like harp on the fact that like 
Africans like sold sold them like into slavery. And it's like mm-hmm. I watched I watched a documentary on the Ashanti Kingdom and then this one like historian, she was talking about how like it was it was really because of one, you know, Europeans like tricking and like misleading like African chiefs like, you know, thinking like, you know, by them by them like they 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 sold they sold people for like yeah. guns you know for protection and stuff so it it, it was really it was mm-hmm. really like it wasn't like they were doing it just because like out of maliciousness or like they wanted to sell their own people it was like it was just circum but they also yeah they also weren't aware of what was going to happen yeah to they, they weren't people. aware like I don't, I don't think yeah. they were they had no clue. I don't think they were like consciously like okay like we're gonna sell these people and like, make sure that like, you know they are slaving away in like a foreign land like I feel like that wasn't the mindset right but like. Mm-hmm. As Africans, I feel like we also need to stop being so like, like hostile and like throwing it in their face, like how like mm-hmm. they don't know where they're from. Because like a lot, a lot of because yep. when when diaspora wars happen, what I don't like to see is like when Africans talk about like oh like at least I know where I'm from. Like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna yeah, you're but gonna that, we see like, that so, that's so, slap in the face. I, 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 don't, I don't like always. that as much as like I have like my own like. It's terrible. It's terrible. I have my own gripes with like yeah. some African Americans like, and like how they treated Africans, but that's one thing that Africans do that I don't like at all. Like that's not that's not something that's yeah. not that's well, not a joke. Said, yeah. That's like a traumatic thing that it's happened not. to black people. Like slavery is not like a joke. Yeah. So seriously, yeah, for, I know for sure. that is seriously. If to be honest, if any African whoever said that to African American or yeah. any black person of the diaspora that backhanded at least my people weren't slaves yeah, yeah. shame on you shame, shame on you for you. real shame on you man shame on you you are you are a um, you are non-starter you know you are non-sensical you are on, <laughs> well, yes exactly <laughs> because like no matter no matter what like <laughs> symbolizing like no matter what foul like thing any can, like African yeah. American or Caribbean person that said to you like you know it doesn't give you the right to go and like make, nothing make fun ever of, how no, dare you no. It's hypocritical. Man. How dare you come and say at least my people were slaves when us yeah. we had to deal with a whole divide and conquer that you just mentioned. On, yeah. We had to deal with imperialism and you you acting like as if we were just chilling. That's yeah. embarrassing. That's not that's nothing to use as you a know, and, and I'll tell you yeah. this, like for me, I got all the, the dark jokes going through school, right? I got all the the booty scratcher, all these jokes, the you know, starving Marvin was another yeah. one. Yeah. Turn off the light. I, I was like, turn off the light. Where you at? You turn off the light. Where's Where Ivan? You know, yeah. you know, where's Anzo? Where's all the, you're blacker than 1159, everything, uh, right? Under the bed. And not once did it ever cross my mind to bring that dirty yeah, side of it. to be like, oh, this you know is what I'm my saying? Trump card right here. Come on, man. Like, shame on you for anyone who uses that card because it's just driving the most like vile sense of the di- division that we don't need. Yeah, I'm like, you so, think you did something, huh? You know, this is what I do. So you think you did something? It's yo, know, it's it shows like you're just just small minded. Yeah, dense. Yeah, dense. Yeah, small minded. Dense, like they like to say. Very true. So no, I appreciate the perspective, well said, yeah. man. It's it's I mean, as you know, there's there's a lot of work to be done, but one thing we're driving towards is unity. Yes. Because, you know, when a, when a Norwegian man meets a German man, he doesn't say, I can't do business with you because you're German. <laughs> Factos. You know what I'm saying? Factos. Um, but that's a whole, All that's right. a that's a story for another day. The last thing we want to get into is, would you rather? Yes. So, e. for in closing, yeah, I wanted to do a, would you rather funny Africans or African comedian version. Okay. So how this is going to go is I'm going to name two funny Africans or African comedians. And in a split round, all three of us are going to vote who we would rather want mm-hmm. to watch, for example. So okay. who do we think is the funnier African? Okay. So are we ready? I'm ready. All right. First question. Would you rather Michael Blackson or don't jealous me. Oh. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, okay. <laughs> so way back when, way back in the day, I would pick Michael Blackson. But today's Michael uh, Blackson, I don't think I would pick. But I I, I will say that mm. overall Michael Blackson like is a greater comedian, but 
I, I would have to say I would rather have Chief Obi right now. I'd rather pick Chief Obi. So Chief Obi. Yeah. I say don't jealous me, but let's say Chief don't, Obi. Chief, Chief Obi. Obi is fine. Let's change it to Chief Obi. Over, over Would Michael you rather Blackson? Michael Blackson or Chief Obi? So he's saying Chief Obi. Okay. I'd have to say Chief Obi. Chief Obi? Yeah. You want to know why? Why? <laughs> there was a whole... Uh, eh, he, that man is Igbo to the bone. To the bone. And he, you will... And even, like, the way he dresses, like, his, his comedy, songs. everything. So, yeah. I'd, I'd have to go Chief Obi over Michael Blackson. And he, and he makes music. Wow. He's a pretty talented guy, too. I don't know. I don't know if you heard that song. He does make good music. Quiku, no, you. That good. Sounds good. I'll try it. Yeah, Chief Obi. Chief Obi for me. Who you saying, Michael Blackson? Look, I can't get jiggy with this. I'm choosing Michael Blackson, bro. All right, all right. Okay, hit us with another one. Next one, we're gonna do Dulo Harris or Sam takes off. Oh, tough choice. For me, it's not that tough. I'll pick Sam Takes Off. I mean, Doodle, Doodle mm. makes really great content, like the voiceovers. But nobody was doing that before him. And now I feel like mm-hmm. I, I, I see a few people who like kind of kind of took his content and like did their own thing. But Sam Takes Off was like, he, he, was the, he was the first guy to like, you know, wear like the African dad clothing and like, you know, like just his mannerisms are like, just, I don't know, he was just he was just hilarious to me. Like he like really embodied like my dad. Like I personally resonated more with his content. <laughs> okay. And so it's a tough choice. I gotta give Dulo his flowers. Like by the way, everyone on this list gets oh, undivided yeah. of course. flowers. Yes. Dulo is the master of voiceovers and then it is T Salt Cries. Like all that <laughs> stuff. It's phenomenal. Mega. But like y'all was saying Sam Takes Off was just like, he came at a time where I was just like, yo, this is exactly the representation I needed. I think he and was so ahead of his time. His African dad stuff. He was definitely. A little bit. Little bit. But he also does music as well. Yeah. He does music. It's phenomenal music, bro. Like, it's kind of like an Alte vibe. Sam Takes Off, like, he is, he's a visionary. So I, I got to give it to him, bro. I gotta give it to Sam Takes Off. Wow, look at you guys with really good answers. Yeah. I'm going with Dulo, man. Yo, Uncle E's going against look, us. I'm, I'm, look, I, look, I, okay. yes, I go on what I'm, I scroll, I see Dulo now still. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. So Fair if enough. I'm looking at from overall legacy wise, yes, mm-hmm. I'll give it to Sam Takes Off. But right now, I'm going with Dulo. Okay. Okay, the, the last one here, guys. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have to put a little twist to it and. It is only right. We have to also give the real legends back in back home in the motherland. We also have to give them a little one. So, last one. Would you rather? Mm-hmm. Or Sophia? Ooh. Or Mr. Ibu? Uh. <laughs> Mr. Ibu? Or Sophia? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. This one is not an easy one at all. <laughs> yeah, that's not easy, at bro. All. <laughs> because so far in London is actually like, I feel like that deserves an Oscar. I don't know. Yeah, for real. Ben Okafor. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yeah, my brother. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> Come to me. Talk. Don't talk to the corners. <laughs> if you want to talk to me, that ain't talk to me. No, that is that is a class. I got my answer." Hey yo, that's a tough one though. But Mr. Evil too, man. Yeah, it's Mr. Evil too. Ah, he's he like the dancing, the 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 facial expressions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That guy's face for was me, just me, expressions me, were just. I think I'll yeah. say Mr. Evil. Yeah, Mr. Mm-hmm. Evil. Okay, okay. Yeah. See, Mr. Evil and his sons were yes, <laughs> treacherous times, man. <laughs> That's who you got. You can't put me in this, man. Okay. I have to go with Sophia. Here's why. That guy was unapologetic, bro. He was. If it was chasing pigeons in London, <laughs> if it's telling Ben Okafor to, to say his name correctly. correctly. Um, yeah, with Sophia did his turn, so I'm going to go with him. I agree. If you want to talk to me, talk to me direct. direct. Stop Not going to the corners. Plus, you know, I met Osofia, had lunch with him. You did. 
So yeah. he came to our house in Gambia. Yeah. Um, mm. My sister had invited him for lunch. Yeah. And I met him, had lunch with him. And he's as funny when he's he's just Osofia that we know. That's how he is. Like, <laughs> funny. I think he was a Chelsea fan. I feel like he wasn't even acting. Yeah. So it's going to be Osofia for me. Yeah. All right. So... That's all we got. Yeah. Um, last thing that we, we wanted to say, man, is uh, one, we want to thank you for taking the time to to commu- to talk to us today um, out of your, your busy schedule. I know it's hard to coordinate three people sitting down to talk. Um, but uh, what what do you what do you, what's next for Yao, Yao Konadu? Like, tell us, give us a synopsis real quick. What's happening next? What's next for me? Um <clears throat> You know, I, I want to make longer style videos. Like, I guess, you know, maybe have my own TV show on YouTube or something like a little web series. I just want to, I just want to make longer content because I feel like with my skits right now, I don't, I feel like I'm not fully telling the stories that I want to tell. So to become a better storyteller, I feel like, you know, I would just have to make longer videos so you guys can fully see, yeah, you know, my experiences, you know, through violence. So I okay. Like, more cinematic and longer videos. Yeah, that, and then the art of storytelling is a gift, man. And so if you, once you find the, the lane that you want to pursue in that, man, best of luck to to you in that. Um, I know that uh, Ian and I plan on keeping this this uh, yeah, this, this partnership not, going. Yeah, when you're not getting rid of us. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we plan on building, we plan on building that, that, um, that media empire together and and so grateful to have connected with you and, and and met you man so now for real thank you for taking the time to just talk to us and and so we could get to know you a little bit better um if you have any parting words for your your fans or for our listeners go ahead and, and say it right now all my socials are yao Konodu tv uh, instagram tiktok twitter youtube uh yeah, all of that. Yao Konadu TV. Everything is all the same. Hundred percent, man. Thank you for being on here. And thank you, Yao. Uncle E, any parting words? Appreciate you, Yao. Keep doing what you're doing. Super proud. And keep that flag that is behind you rising high. Keep being the black Ghana star black of stars. TikTok. You yes. know what I mean? <laughs> so, man, just super proud, man. Super yeah. proud. I'm just really proud of you and really happy we got the chance to meet to you, get to know you more. And we can't wait to see you in person. Yeah. And also, by the way, this is the tallest Ghanaian I have known of. Ghanaian I didn't man. know Ghanaian <laughs> men were, went over <laughs> six the foot two. Man in Ghana. So, <laughs> Yao was not having regular Banku. He was having, <laughs> he was having Banku Pro Max. Yeah. You know? So... Maximum XP Banku. Maximum is exactly XP Banku. Yeah, so bro. we look forward to linking up with you soon, yeah. brother. Yeah, man. Um, all the best, bro. Shout out to you. Um, we appreciate you joining us today. Um, if y'all enjoyed it, like, subscribe, follow the man himself. Keep slicing and dicing out here. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us. And thank you guys. All the best. Until next time. Peace. Thank you.